All right, just for fun today, guys, let's take a look at five interesting examples of rocks that form volcanically or are derived volcanically. So what we have here first is this big guy, and this is basalt. It's got some weight to it, despite having those voids or air pockets. Um, you see a lot of red in this particular piece. That tells you it's pretty iron-rich, and that's pretty characteristic of basalt. Basalt is an iron-magnesium-rich uh, volcanic rock that is formed from the extrusion from volcanoes, so it's an extrusive volcanic rock, but its chemical composition and formation is a little different than some other volcanic rocks, so it is not like granite because granite is formed intrusively. Um, those crystals cool slowly and form a completely different kind of rock, plus the mineral composition is completely different, so those are silica rich. Um, but it's also contrasting from the other rock I'm going to show you now here. And that is, let's go to pumice. So this is, on the contrary, really light. I mean, this weighs next to nothing. Some of this stuff even floats on water. It's so light and airy. This is, contrastingly to the other one, this is really silica-rich stuff. This is basically um, silica, really fine silica, almost glass-like. But it's so fine and there's so much air um, in it that it ends up being this light. So this would be extruded from a volcano. And sometimes you can get pumice fields. We saw that around Mount St. Helens after the eruption where the pumice just was covering the ground. This is actually a pretty large piece of pumice. A lot of them break up easily and so we find them small. But this one is pretty large. I, I have an interest in just going around and trying to find the biggest piece of pumice. I have one that's a bit larger than this one, maybe like twice this size. Uh, one of the biggest ones that I've found so far, but I'll keep looking. Um, yeah, so that's pumice. Let's see what else we have. So similar to pumice, we have this rock that has a bit more weight to it than a lot more weight to it than pumice. Um, but chemically, they're somewhat similar, believe it or not, even though, wow, that looks really different, right? But this is a silica-rich rock as well. This is rhyolitic, and that would be the extrusive opposite of that basalt would be these, these pumice and rhyolite. So this is basically a, a rhyolite. This is rhyolitic, it's silica rich. Um, but so is this. And this has formed a really cool way in something we call orbicular, um, orbicular rhyolite. And you can see why, you can see those orbs, those concentric rings. So this is volcanic material, a lot of volcanic ash and tuff um, in this area and it, he has these voids too with pockets of crystals. So really cool piece here. Let you check out the pattern there. I just love the pattern on this particular one, but yeah. So orbicular rhyolite, another cool thing that can come from volcanic material. Um, this one on the contrary is really smooth. This is from volcanic ash. Um, volcanic ash again is rich in silica, so it can form um, basically a whole host of different types of rocks um, initially from you know the eruption in the pumice or as it collects and cools um, and also it can be reworked and we get we get chert and churty material that forms from silica rich material so that's basically what this is it would be a silica rich volcanic ash has formed uh, again it's not too heavy of a rock then and it's just really cool looking. So that forms from volcanic ash. And the last one is this guy. Now, this guy's got a little more weight to him. And it looks a heck of a lot like obsidian. I could have put obsidian here too. Um, obsidian is super cool. We call it volcanic glass because it basically is like glass. It almost kind of... Um, it, it, it mineralizes so fast that it doesn't have time to form crystals. And so what you're actually seeing with obsidian, it's, it's not really a rock or mineral. It, it's just it, it formed, that's why we call it volcanic glass. It formed so fast it didn't have time to form crystals. Well, this is actually not obsidian despite looking a lot like it. This is something that we call vitrifier. And it is somewhat similar. It is volcanically derived, um, but it forms a little differently. This is out of the core of a hot body of molten rock. And it stays so hot being in that position um, that we get a kind of volcanic glass-like material similar to obsidian. But obsidian, like I mentioned, um, forms a little differently. It just, it actually crystallizes so fast 
that you get volcanic glass. In this case, it actually stays in the center of the hot body of material and that keeps it molten. And then when it does cool quickly still, it forms vitrifier. So there you go. So five very interesting and awesome examples of volcanically derived rocks. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about all of these, I will talk in more detail about rhyolite and igneous rocks, extrusive igneous rocks, these ones that are extruded from volcanoes, as well as those ones I briefly mentioned, the intrusive ones, those are the ones that cool quickly below the surface. They don't get extruded from volcanoes per se. Um, obsidian, vitrifier, uh, volcanic ash, all these things I'll be talking about in detail and taking you on field adventures in geology. So just head over to Let's Go Geo and join me on the next adventure. I'll see you guys there.